Kingdom Holdings is to revive talks to raise up to $1 billion in loans. This only a few weeks after its chairman, Prince Walid bin Talal, was released from detention. Now, we're going to be airing our full interview with the most famous face caught up in Saudi Arabia's so-called corruption crackdown. That's going to happen tomorrow. But here's a little teaser of that exclusive interview. I am for the anti-corruption that took place in Saudi Arabia. Now, unfortunately, I was uh, out of that group. But fortunately, I'm out of it right now, and life is back to normal. So I'm not the person who's going to come and say, you know, I forgive, I, 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 I forgive, but I don't forget. I say I forgive, and I forget at the same time also. Joining us now from Riyadh, Bloomberg's Eric Schatzker. Eric, obviously, uh, the other participants in that conversation. Eric, kind of g give us the skinny. What do we learn during that interview? It must have been a fascinating conversation. Guy, it certainly was. As you're aware, I've known Prince Al-Walid for almost a decade. So I approached this interview with both anticipation and trepidation. What would he be like? The man spent 83 days in confinement at the Ritz-Carlton. He is, as you're aware, among the most fascinating people in the Middle East. He's the richest man in Saudi Arabia, in fact, in the region. What would life like be going forward for Prince Al-Walid? One thing he has assured me, there was no torture, at least not of, not of him, inside the hotel. And another thing, there's an agreement between him and the Saudi government, the details of which you'll learn in tomorrow's interview. But I can report, Guy, that he is, for all intents and purposes, back to his old self. He's as energetic, as engaged, as intense, I should say, and you know that having seen our conversations before, as I've ever known him to be. So not a changed man, Eric? Not in my experience, Guy. Clearly, there are many questions that remain to be answered. What was life like for him inside the Ritz-Carlton? Was he able to talk with other detainees? Who did he negotiate with uh, among government officials? And furthermore, what did they want? Why was he there in the first place? These are all things that we discussed. We also talked about his business and his investments. Does the agreement with the government pertain to those? Will he be able to act freely? Can he travel? What about his bank accounts? Again, I don't want to leave you hanging, but those are all things we discussed, and they're all questions we answer in the course of this interview that we'll begin airing tomorrow. Yeah, I, I think you do actually want to leave us hanging because, yeah, the anticipation <laughs> is growing. Eric, thank you very much indeed. Looking forward to hearing about it. Eric Schatzka uh, joining us out of Riyadh.